friends and welcome back. I'm Mark Baker and in today's program we're going to continue talking about the subject of the incorruptible seed. We've been looking at this in the previous three broadcasts. We've covered a lot of ground. I encourage you, if you're just joining us, to go back and look at the previous few programs. Pull out what the Holy Spirit has released through these teachings. We won't have time to go back through everything and look at it. I also encourage you as we get into today's teaching, to get your Bible, if you do not have it with you, open it up, whether it's your you know, written Bible, it's a hard copy or on your phone or other type of device, it really will help you to look at the Word of God for yourself. Allow the Holy Spirit to be speaking. Open your heart up and ask the Holy Spirit to teach you, to guide you. We looked in the last program at 1 John chapter 2, and we saw that the anointing within us teaches us. That anointing is the personal Holy Spirit. The problem we have today, and this is something we're going to jump into and look at in this program today, is far too many of us do not have a revelation of this concept of the incorruptible seed or a revelation of our identity in Christ Jesus. But it all comes back to that incorruptible seed. We are crying out for things that have been provided to us. We've seen in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 2 that God has made provision for us. He's given us grace. He's given us peace. He's, and in verse 3, everything pertaining to life and godliness through the knowledge, through the incorruptible seed. Any type of lack in your life, friend, whether it be in health, whether it be in finances, you know, whatever area of life it might be, any type of lack comes back to the simple concept of a lack of revelation knowledge concerning the incorruptible seed. Because he said that he gives us, you know, everything pertaining to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us. Where do we find that knowledge? We find that knowledge in the Word of God. But we have a lack of understanding, a lack of revelation in these things. I've been to so many prayer meetings over the years where we spent time crying out to God to, to pour out His Spirit, to let His Spirit move, let His Spirit, you know, activate His Spirit, activate His anointing. I've been to meetings and I've heard messages talking about this double portion of the anointing, triple, let God give you a triple portion of the anointing. Friend, there's only one Holy Spirit. He is dwelling within us and He is the anointing. To receive a double portion would mean to receive two Holy Spirits, and that just doesn't make sense. You see, we come up with these goofy ideas because we're not versed in the gospel of Jesus Christ that Paul gives, that Peter gave in his letters, that John gave in his letters, that James gave in his letter. It is the gospel of Jesus Christ revealed by the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit operates in line with the incorruptible seed of God's Word. If you are not planting the Word of God into your soul on a daily basis, consistently, continuous, giving focus to it, you will not be experiencing a continuous and constant flow of revelation, of anointing, of power. Does that mean these things are not there, that they're not available to you? No. We pray for God to pour out His anointing. We pray for God to pour out His presence, for His Spirit to move in our services. We are the ones that have the Spirit within us. We are the ones that have the anointing. It is, we act as if we're waiting on God to move, but He moved when He sent Jesus to the cross. He moved when He gave Jesus as the final sacrifice for our sins. He moved when He poured out His wrath upon Jesus at the cross. He has moved and He is now waiting for us to step into what He has provided us. We talk about God being in control. Friend, that is one of the most dangerous doctrines in the body of Christ today. God is supreme. He is sovereign. He is the King of kings. He is the creator of the universe. But He has deputized us. He has delegated the authority of this planet to us, and we access that authority. We access the power. We access the anointing through the incorruptible seed. You cannot walk in the fullness of all that God has called you to walk in if you are not continuously, constantly planting that seed within your heart. So we, we started out on this journey in 1 Peter chapter 1 
in verse 23, where Peter tells us that we were born again, not of corruptible, but of incorruptible seeds. What is that incorruptible seed? That incorruptible seed is the Word of God. I took you at the end of the last program to Mark chapter 4, and I read through the parable of the sower. I told you that this is a very significant parable, given the understanding that it is the first parable that Jesus taught. The first recorded parable of all the parables is the parable of the sower. In Mark chapter 14, notice what it says here, the sower sows the word, but then going up to verse 13, know you not this parable, and how then will you know all parables? So what Jesus is doing here is from the very beginning, he is giving us the key to understand all parables. So he starts out with the parable that's going to explain all the other parables that will follow. He's telling them, I'm going to begin teaching in parables. I'm going to start giving you these truths and these nuggets. But the key to understanding what you're going to be hearing is to be understanding the concept of seed, time, and harvest. The concept of the incorruptible seed. Let's turn over to Luke's account of this. And we're going to pick it up with Jesus' explanation in, in verse 10, Luke chapter 8 and verse 10. We're going to look at it in the different Gospels and look at the explanations. We're going to kind of dig this apart. I'm not sure how long this will take. We want to follow the Holy Spirit and allow Him to tell us when we're ready you know, to take the next step. And I just ask you to be praying. When you talk about revelation knowledge, when you talk about the Holy Spirit, so many people do not know the Holy Spirit, do not have an understanding of the relation that, that is available to Him. I encourage you just to ask Him, just like you would ask me, just like you would ask any other person, Holy Spirit, I understand the importance of what I'm hearing here. I just want to yield to your anointing and I ask you to introduce yourself, to speak to me, to guide me, to help me through this. You see, friends, we're not going to get everything right every single time. But the Holy Spirit's with us, and He's very patient. We'll make mistakes, and He understands that. He's never going to condemn us. He's never going to criticize us. He's never going to put us down. He just meets us where we are, and He helps us grow. And that's the thing. We're the ones that condemn ourselves. When we allow ourselves to get into condemnation, it is us condemning ourselves, and it is us building up a wall that comes between us and that relationship that's available with him, with, with God of the universe. So here in Luke chapter 10, let's start. I mean, Luke chapter 8, we'll start in verse 10. And notice what Jesus is saying here. He's tr starting to explain the parable of the sower. We read it in the last, at the end of the last program. In Mark chapter 4, we saw that there were four types of ground, and I told you that these were conditions of the heart. They're not presented necessarily in sequential order, but they do present what I would, I would personally think could be considered a process of growth. Now, we're not going to necessarily go into everything about this, that we could go into it. And I do have on my second book called The Holy Spirit in the Incorruptible Seed. We talk about this quite a bit. And I encourage you, if you do not have a copy, to go get a copy. And I believe it will be a blessing to you. The books that God has given me, the messages in those, are a supplement to what we're teaching in these programs. Our goal is to see you receive the Word and allow the Word to become rooted in your heart. We're not talking about the books to sell the books. We want the books to go out to, to spread the message that God has given us. So here in verse 10 in Luke chapter 8, notice what Jesus said. Unto you it is given the mystery, to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But to others in parables that seeing they may not see, and hearing they may not understand. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. Let's first of all look at this, what Jesus is saying in verse 10. Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Unto you, the followers of Christ, unto you, the children of God, is given to know the mysteries of God, the mysteries of his kingdom. We have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our teacher. He is our guide. It is given to us to know, to understand, to experience the revelation knowledge of His kingdom. The things of God should not be a mystery to us. 
But unfortunately, because we are not sowing the, the incorruptible seed of God's Word into our soul on a daily basis, because we are not spending time meditating upon the Word, they are a mystery. Now, he goes on to say something that used to be a struggle with me to understand. Because notice what it says here, to others in parables, that seeing they may not see, and hearing they may not understand. Is he saying that he's speaking in parables because there's certain people he doesn't want to get the message? Absolutely not, friend. What is he saying? Well, first of all, seeing they might not see. When you look at this, you're, when you look at this word seeing, it's referencing to look with the physical eyes. If you look in the original languages, we're talking about looking with the physical eyes. You cannot look at the incorruptible seed of God's word with just your physical eyes and see the revelation that has been planted within it. It is not something that can be discerned from the physical realm. So what Jesus is saying is, I'm going to teach you in parables, and you will have to develop yourself in spiritual things and spiritual understanding to receive and to see what is being presented. He is not hiding these things, but he is telling his disciples, he's telling his followers, that I am going to begin teaching you the mysteries of the kingdom. These are things that have to be received with the heart. Seeing, they might not see. Seeing with their physical eyes, they might not see. And it goes on to say, hearing, they might not understand. Once again, if you look in the original languages, it's referencing the natural realm. Hearing with their natural ears, they might not have spiritual understanding. They may not have revelation knowledge. When you look at the word understanding, it's referencing the spiritual realm. Hearing with the physical ear will not give you spiritual understanding. Now, when we look at this and, and talk about this with the incorruptible seed, this is a very important concept that you need to get a hold of to understand what Jesus is talking about here. He's not hiding these things, but he's also making it perfectly clear that to understand them, you cannot do this with your physical eyes or your physical ears. Hearing, they may not hear. It is not that he is not allowing them to hear, or he's only selecting certain people to hear. He's saying that you can't look at the Word of God, you can't hear the Word of God with your natural ears and your natural eyes and receive spiritual understanding. These are things that can only be received in the Spirit under that anointing that we talked about from 1 John chapter 2 that abides within us. That's why it is so important for us to develop a relationship with the Holy Spirit. The seed is the Word of God. The incorruptible seed is the Word of God. It must be planted into our souls. We do see it with our physical eyes. We do hear it with our physical ears because they are the gateways to the soul. But we do not receive the revelation of what we're hearing or what we're seeing at that point. They must be fed into the soul through the physical ear, through the physical eye. But what Jesus is saying is you cannot see by just seeing with your physical eye. You cannot hear in the Spirit. You cannot develop understanding by just hearing with your physical ears. So it does not stop with just seeing and hearing in our physical eyes. To get the incorruptible seed into our souls and then move beyond to revelation knowledge requires us to go deeper. There are a lot of people who stop with seeing and hearing. And Jesus is right up front in his very first parable telling us, you cannot stop with just looking at the word, with just listening to the word with your physical ears and eyes. These are not things that can be discerned with the physical abilities, the physical eyes. If you go over to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, we see a very important statement by Paul that goes along with what Jesus is saying here. In verse 18, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18, while we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. 
Once again, if you look at the original languages and look at how this is being written, while we look not at the things that are seen with our physical eyes, but we look instead to the things which cannot be seen by our physical eyes. How do we do that? We do that by looking with the eye of our spirit. You must develop yourself, you must train yourself to look within if you are going to gain full benefit from the incorruptible seed of God's word and walk at the level God desires for you to walk. While we look not at the things that are seen with our physical eyes, we look beyond that. We look into the realm of the spirit. But the key here, friend, is coming back to relationship. You've heard me say this over and over and over if you've been listening to this program. Everything comes back to relationship. We must develop our relationship with the Holy Spirit if we're going to look beyond what is seen with our physical ears, eyes. And we're going to hear beyond just with our physical ears. While well, we look not at the things that are seen. Why is that? For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen with our physical eyes are eternal. Things of this natural realm are temporary. Things of the spiritual realm are eternal. This natural realm is going to pass away. It's going to deteriorate. It's going to be gone. You can see this in archaeology. You know, sometimes you, you hear about archaeological discoveries of things that happened in history where they had to dig down. Sometimes, you know, I've heard up to a half mile or more deep to get down to where the thing, where the event occurred. Well, wait a minute. Why, why couldn't they just dig at the surface? Because things deteriorate. They become covered up. They expire over time. Natural things are dying. The natural realm is dying. Death is king within this natural realm because of the fall of man. So we have to train ourselves if we're going to understand the parable of the sower or any parable or any part of the kingdom of God to look within, to begin to move from within, from within our spiritual eyes and our spiritual ears. You say, well, I don't understand how we can do this, Brother Mark. It is from relationship. It's learning to live from relationship. You can do this, but again, it's going to take time alone with the Holy Spirit. Going back here to Luke chapter 10, until I mean 8 chapter verse 10, unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parable, that seeing with their physical eyes they may not see, and hearing they may not understand. The choice here is not up to God of whether they're going to see or whether they're going to hear. Turn with me to Romans chapter 8, because it, in Romans chapter 8, Paul kind of builds on this thought and helps us understand some things that we're looking at. You cannot live according to the natural realm and expect to walk in the supernatural power of God. We pray for God to manifest, to move, to pour out. He is living within us. The Holy Spirit is within your spirit if you've made Jesus the Lord of your life. What Jesus was saying once again, and I keep repeating this, and it's important that we get this. He was not saying that I'm going to start teaching you in parables now, and only certain chosen people will get to receive what I'm teaching. There are spiritual truths that are available to any who will not just listen with their physical ears. There are certain spiritual truths that will be available to anybody who's not just looking with their physical eyes. That's what Jesus was saying. Not that I'm going to hide this for the few chosen that are chosen to receive it, but I'm going to leave it in your hands. I'm going to begin teaching in parables. This is the parable, first parable. I'm going to explain it to you, but this explanation, which we're going to look at as we move forward in the series, is not available to those who are just looking or listening with the physical implements they have. Your physical ears and eyes cannot get you into revelation, but they are important because they are the gateways to the soul. The word must be planted into the soul in order for you to begin to draw the life out of it and begin to receive revelation knowledge. So yes, we do use our physical eyes. Yes, we do use our physical ears to get the word into our soul, but then we water it with prayer. We spend time praying in the spirit we spend time fellowshipping of the Spirit and allow the, that word to begin to take root into our soul and begin to tap into the life of God, and it will begin to release revelation knowledge. When that revelation knowledge begins to flow from our spirit, we begin 
to do what I call view this world with our spiritual eyes. It is that connection between soul and spirit that we're looking to develop, to create when we're meditating in the Word. It is that connection between our soul and our spirit where the life of God dwells, where that anointing dwells, that we're working on to develop as we look at the Word, as we listen to the Word. But we cannot understand if we just stop at looking and listening. There are people who go to church every single week and listen to messages. There are people who faithfully, you know, open scripture and read it for five to ten minutes every day, but they don't give it much thought afterwards. To come to the place where you're looking with your spiritual eyes, where you're listening with your spiritual eyes, with your spiritual ears, you must dedicate time, effort, and energy. God is not going to make you do this. There are a lot of things happening in our lives that are not sent to us by God. They are there because we're allowing them to be there by our inconsistency in effort expended in the Word of God. They are in our lives because we have not been giving the proper amount of time, effort, energy consistently and constantly to the things of God. Notice what Paul says here in Romans chapter 8, because it's very important to the concept of seed, time, and harvest. We're talking about the incorruptible seed of God's Word. In Romans chapter 8, we'll just start in verse 1. It says, There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Now, notice this phrase in verse 1, walk not after the flesh. What does this have to do with the incorruptible seed of God's Word, Brother Mark, you might ask? Going back to Luke chapter 8, and verse 10. Those that see and do not see. Those that hear and do not hear. What is going on here? When it says, walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And you notice if you're looking at your Bible, it's a big S, capital S, the Holy Spirit. The word walk is an active, operational verb within the Greek. Those who are operating, not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Those who are operating in line and in relationship with the Holy Spirit. Those who are walking with the Holy Spirit. Those who are listening to the Holy Spirit. Those who are developing their relationship with the Holy Spirit. You see, what happens is people get into condemnation because their focus is outward instead of inward. Their focus is on their actions, on their mistakes, on the things that they perceive as being wrong. When you were made Jesus the Lord of your life, the Holy Spirit sealed you into Jesus. We see this in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 24, you were created in righteousness and pure holiness. The Holy Spirit took up residence within your spirit, and He is living within you right now. But you must choose on a daily basis to walk, to operate, to act according to the Spirit. If you go down further in this book, in verse 14, it says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. They are the ones who are not walking after the flesh, but they are walking after the Spirit. They are the ones who are seeing with their spiritual eyes and hearing with their spiritual ears. But if you are not following the Spirit and you are not walking according to the Spirit, then you cannot operate according to the things we're talking about. The incorruptible seed of God's Word will not produce the revelation of the gospel of Jesus Christ that is portrayed within the New Testament letters. You will not walk in the freedom that God has ordained for you to walk in. Once again, you hear ministers, you hear Christians talking about God is in control. He is not in control of the decisions you make to either pursue His Word or not pursue His Word. He has given you everything pertaining to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who has called you to glory and virtue. But that knowledge has already been provided. You must choose to open the Scriptures. You must choose to turn things off to ask the Holy Spirit to teach you, to ask the Holy Spirit to guide you, to ask the Holy Spirit to lead you, and He will do so. He is just waiting for your invitation, friend. He is a gentleman, and He's not going to force Himself into your life. Sons and daughters of God are led by the Spirit of God. 
At least they should be. In my experience, most of the people in the church today do not acknowledge the Holy Spirit, do not look to Him. And that is why you have some people who receive more help from Him than other people. Is it He plays favorites? No, absolutely not. It's that some have trained themselves to look to Him, and some have trained themselves not to look to Him. You say, well, why would anybody train themselves not to look to the Holy Spirit? They don't do it knowingly, friend. You don't make a conscious decision. Well, today I'm going to work on my exercises to dull myself to the things of the Spirit. You can train yourself without even realizing you're training yourself. You do this by spending your time watching television, by meditating on the news headlines, by doing everything throughout the day with the natural realm and never once looking to the Holy Spirit. He's not forcing you to do that, though, because these are choices you are making. Everything that is manifesting in your life, everything that you are experiencing is a result of the seeds that you've planted in the past, the choices that you've made. It is so much easier to think, well, God's in control of everything. And there will be some people who will be listening to this program and say, well, I don't agree with anything you're saying, Brother Mark, because God is in control. Well, let me ask you a question. If God is really in control then that means He is making me say the things that I'm saying. Did you think about that? No, we don't really think through these things, do we, friend? We don't think about these goofy ideas we come up with. We just hear them and we begin like parrots to repeat what we've said. Friend, God has put the choice in our hands. God has given us the incorruptible seed of His Word. But we are just like these people that Jesus talked about in Luke chapter 8 and verse 10. We see with our physical ears, eyes, but we don't see with our spirit. We hear with our physical ears, but we don't hear with our spirit because we are not operating in line with the spirit because we are not taking time on a daily basis to consistently and constantly develop a relationship with Him. We're going to pick up here from at the, in the next program. We are out of time for today. And as we close out, I want to remind you, Carolyn, I love you. We pray for you. And we just ask you to please... If there's anything our team can stand with you in prayer, send us an email, prayer at mbmediaministries.net, and we will be standing with you, expecting full victory. But until the next program, let me just remind you once again, you can live life to the fullest, walking by the faith of the Son of God.